Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Project CD Chronicles. In today's video, as you can see from the tab open in our browser, we're going to install QEMU. We'll install KVM if it's not already installed, and we'll go through some steps. And of course, the VERT libraries so we can virtualize all our operating systems. Normally, when it comes to Windows machines, the choice was usually VirtualBox or VMware. But here I find the QEMU combo to be very useful and, in terms of performance, excellent. All right, first a brief description. QEMU actually stands for Quick Emulator. It's a hardware emulator and an open source hypervisor. Here we are on its page, and as you can see, it can emulate an entire computer, CPU, memory, disks, network cards, and even different architectures especially those different from the host. It can run virtual machines with or without hardware acceleration. So, we have what you could call complete emulation. It allows you to run operating systems with different architectures. And we also have accelerated virtualization, which we'll talk about in a moment with KVM. So now let's move on to KVM. Let's enlarge this for a moment. Let's say KVM stands for Kernel-Based Virtual Machine, as the name suggests. And in fact, it's a Linux kernel module that turns Linux into a native Type 1 hypervisor. So what happens because of this? It acts as a bridge between the CPU hardware, whether it's Intel VT or AMD V, like in our case, and the virtualization managed by the hypervisor, which runs in user space. And in this case, that's QEMU. So basically, what does QEMU do? It enables, let's say, the direct execution of the virtual machine's code on the physical machine without emulation. Basically, that's what hypervisors do. And in addition, it provides memory isolation for the virtual machine, making it more secure. All right, that's what it does. As for the rest, peripherals, the CPU, and so on, QEMU handles that work. In short, that's how the two work together, and later we'll also look at libvirt. So, for example, the direct execution of code on the CPU is handled by QEMU. Emulation of network disk devices, USB, disk image management, and even the management of the graphical console are all handled by QEMU, and to some extent also by libvirt. So we can say that QEMU basically handles the user space part of the hypervisor, while KVM accelerates everything related to the CPU. What's the result? Obviously, it's a virtual machine that, you could say, runs almost as fast as a physical CPU, but with a lot, a lot of flexibility. All right, the first necessary step, as you can see here, is to check whether your CPU or in this case, our CPU supports virtualization. And as you can see, it gave us 32, which are the CPU cores that, as you can see here, are exactly the 32 cores it's able to handle. So, if the result is greater than zero, the CPU supports virtualization, which means that virtualization is enabled in the BIOS or UEFI even though I'm not showing that part here. Technically, you just need to enable Intel VT or AMD V, depending on your processor. On the other hand, if the result is zero, that means virtualization is not enabled, neither the machine's CPU doesn't support virtualization, or it's not enabled in the BIOS. Okay, that's it for the first step. It's mandatory. All right, before moving forward, I recommend, especially in, in CashUX, but really for all the different Linux distributions, to update all the packages. This is particularly important here because this is actually a rolling release, and in just a few days, the next version will already be released. All right, see you at the end anyway. Just a little more patience while the system updates. We're almost done. And then we'll actually go ahead and install the necessary packages that will allow us to run QEMU, KVM, and Libvirt. 
but we'll get to that as soon as the update finishes here. All right, now you should go ahead and install these packages, QEMU. As you can see, Vert Manager, DNS Mask, VDE2, Bridge Utils, OpenBSD Netcat, and Libvert. Then we'll go over what each of them means and why we're using them. In this case, it's going to install the whole package. I'll see you at the end, and then we'll look at why we basically installed them, meaning that QEMU is the hardware emulator and hypervisor. Vert Manager will be used later to install the virtual machines. We'll talk about that soon, and after that, we'll describe the other packages. All right, here we are, basically. Let me scroll up a bit because this is the very last line. But basically, as I was saying, I've installed these packages. QEMU, which is the hardware emulator and hypervisor, we've already talked about. Vert Manager is basically a GUI for managing virtual machines, and it will be more convenient for us than creating a machine from the command line. Then we have Dinsmask, which basically provides DHCP support for the various machines. We'll need that as well. I added VDE for the virtual distributed Ethernet. Then we have Bridge Utils, which are all tools related to network bridging. And then some auxiliary tools like OpenBSD Netcat, and most importantly, the core part, Libvert, which is the management daemon for the hypervisor, basically the virtualization libraries we mentioned earlier. As you can see, it is a toolkit to manage virtualization platforms. All right, if everything went well, technically, now we need to check if the modules have been loaded into the kernel. So, basically, we use grep to check if the Intel modules have been loaded for those who have an Intel machine. But in my case, the machine is actually AMD, so I check if the driver modules have been loaded. Good, everything went smoothly. If they haven't been loaded, of course, you need to do it with sudo mod probe. In this case, as I mentioned earlier, either KVM Intel or, in this case, KVM AMD. Okay, there's nothing else to do. All right, as the last step, I need to enable the libvert services. As a standard practice, we accomplish this task by running the command system to enable now libverted, which both enables the libverted service to start automatically at boot and immediately starts it right now, ensuring that virtualization support is active and ready to use. Okay? You do it like this. It creates the symlink and so on. And again, pseudo system to start, because you still need to start them libverted. That's it. We can take a moment to check if it has. If needed, you can check if they actually started with system till status libverted. Great! And as you can see, Service Legacy's monolithic daemon. This is important too. It's a shame it's down here, but eventually I'll move this whole part up. You need to add the user basically. Sumod. Sorry, I meant mod. You need to add the user, in this case, Claudio, which is me to the group for the vert libraries, okay? This is so you can make them work and give the necessary permissions to use them. All right, as you can see, we ran the virtual machine manager with vert manager from the command line, but we can also launch it here from the GUI. One more thing that I didn't. I actually forgot to mention that when I added the user with user mod AG, I added them to the vert libraries, but I forgot to add them to the KVM group. So SIB needs to be added to both libvert and KVM. Obviously, you need to log out and log back in so that the user actually becomes part of the groups. And there you have it. We've basically launched our virtual machine manager connected to KVM. What else can I say? That's all for this video. Next, we'll go ahead and install some virtual machines using ISOs and we'll have some fun exploring different configurations. And what else can I say? If you've made it all the way to the end, thank you, and I'll see you soon in another video about our beloved Arch XSI OS, where we'll look at more features of this distro we love so much. Thanks everyone, Claudio.